We're starting unit three. So remember, unit three is all about parallel lines and transversals. So this is the first section. A lot of its definitions, um, a lot of it we talked about at the beginning of the year, but remember how nitpicky everything is in geometry. So I'm really going to go over how you need to name things, so pay attention. Um, so we know what parallel lines are. They are, um, <laughs> they are two coplanar. Uh, they are two coplanar lines that never intersect, right? Um, and coplanar just means they're on the same plane, so of course they would have to be on the same plane, never intersecting. Um, we use um, arrows. Arrows are used to indicate the lines are parallel. So I, if these arrows weren't here, I could not assume that line AB is parallel to CD. I mean, they could be off by like half a degree, which would make them almost look parallel. The only way I know that these lines are parallel is because of these arrows right here. That's how we name them. So every diagram has to have those arrows in there if you want the reader to know that those lines are parallel. So when we name that these lines are parallel, I would say that AB, notice arrows because AB is a line, is parallel, two lines up and down, that means parallel, to CD. So that's how we would name the symbolic notation for this diagram, okay? Um, and notice uppercase letters. We've talked about that before on a line. So all that language that we used earlier in the year is now still coming back and, of course, used all year. All right, parallel planes. Parallel planes are planes that never intersect. So when we name a plane, we must say, because it's located with one italicized uppercase letter, I'm going to say plane J... Parallel, still use the same symbol here for um, parallel, plane K. So notice what I had to write out. I had to write the word plane J in plane K. Um, let's look at the skew lines. Skew lines are non-coplanar lines. So non-coplanar means they're not on the same plane. Non-coplanar lines that never intersect. Intersect. So, for example, I'm going to use T, TW, is skew, so they can't be on the same plane, so none of these can't be on the same plane, they can't be on the same plane. They are non-planar, and they don't intersect. So look at U, Q. This one would go infinitely this way, this one would go infinitely up, and they would never intersect. So U, Q is skewed. V, R is skewed. If you look in the back, ST is skewed. PQ is skewed. So let's name those. PS. Um, no, oh, I'm just giving examples. Okay, so examples T, I don't know where my head is. TW and UQ are skewed. Um, T, W, and V, R are skewed. Um, T, uh, let's do um, S, or excuse me, P, Q. P, Q, and V, R are skewed. So there's many different examples you could use for the skewed lines. Those are just a few of them. Um, when we look at uh, example one, so now we have a three-dimensional figure, and if I want to name all segments parallel to AE, then I would say, let's first identify AE. So parallel to AE would be HD, GC, and FB. Those are the ones, so there's three, um, three parallel segments, and we would name them BF, G, C, I think that's a G, and H, D. Okay, so remember how we name those. Give two examples of parallel planes. So I could say plane E, H, G, E, H, G, and plane A, D, C, B, or A, D, A, D, C. Those two planes. I could say plane F G 
you should go in alphabetical order. So plane B, C, G, and A, D, H are parallel. If I want to name all segments that are skewed to G, H, so here's G, H, so my skew lines would be F, B, E, A, um, am I looking at any more skew lines? E, A, E, A, F, B, um, that one's parallel, oh, B, C, and A, D. Take me a while, I'm running a little slow. Um, all right, example two. Go ahead and try that. Pause it. All right, are you back? Okay, so real quick, I'm going to go through A, and it's O-P. Um, B is going to be J-O, K-P, L-Q, and M-R. Part C, you should have gotten plain P-Q-R. And for the last one, name four segments, should be J-O, JK, <laughs> I'm not just kidding, um, JN and PK, ah, P, that's a P, PK, right, all right, let's flip over to the back, all right, here we go, transversals, so this is important, this is the fun part, I love transversals and lines being cut by a transversal, so a transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines, so here's L and M, line T is intersecting, so Line T is my transversal. So my example is line T. All right, this is where it gets fun because this is where you name angles. Um, I love, love, love this part of geometry. Here's what I like to think about. I think about food all the time, obviously. So here's my transversal right here. If you put a hamburger bun or a hot, in this case it's a hamburger, here's the hamburger, and everything inside these lines this is the inside of that. Angles 1, 2, 8, and 7 are the outside. That's the hamburger bun. And the inside of the, of the burger, the meat, and the veggies would be 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that's in um, interior angles would be these. And exterior angles is the hot dog bun. Okay? So if I asked you interior angles... You would say angle three, angle four, angle five, and angle six, because they're inside that, that hot hammer. My external angles would be angle one, angle two, angle seven, and angle eight. You see those? One, two, seven, and eight. I hope you can see that picture, visual. So I'm going to start with alternating interior angles. Think about what alternating interior angle says. Alternating interior means they're kind of opposite. One's on the top, one's on the bottom, one's on the left of the transversal, one's on the right of that transversal. So if you look, what is alternating with four? It has to be six. This one's on the top, this one's on the bottom. This one's on the left, this one's on the right. So four and six, angle four and six, are going to be alternating interior because they're inside. And another pair are going to be three and five. Angle three and five. Those are alternating inside. So if those are alternating interior angles, think about what alternating exterior angles are going to do. It's going to be the same concept, except they're on the outside. Those are the hamburger buns. So angle one is going to be alternating with seven. Angle one's on the top left. Angle seven's on the bottom right. Opposite sides of the transversal. One's on top, one's on bottom. So alternating exterior are going to be angle one and angle seven. The other pair is two and eight. Angle two and angle eight. So that's a lot of information so far. We've already got four pairs of angles named. Alternating interior, alternating exterior. Hopefully you can see that visual. So let's talk about consecutive same side interior. So here's the inside of the hamburger bun. Consecutive just means, um, consecutive interior means they're on the same side of that transversal. So four and five are going to be same side and angle three and angle six. And if you think about consecutive exterior, they're on the same side except they're exterior angles. So angle one and angle eight, 
and angle two and angle seven. Okay, so same side, consecutive interior, consecutive exterior. Hopefully that's easy to remember. Corresponding angles would be this. Imagine I took scissors and I cut straight through this line right here. Okay, and if I picked up angles one, two, four, three, and I set them right on top of five, six, eight, and seven, who would one be sitting on top of? If I picked it up and I set it down, angle one would be on top of five, angle two would be on top of six, four would be on top of eight, and three would be on top of seven. So when you think about corresponding angles, it just means where are those parts corresponding? One is on the top left, five is on the top left, if you cut it into two parts. Angle two is on the top right, six is on the top right. Four is on the bottom left, eight is on the bottom left. Three is on the bottom right, seven is on the bottom right. So think about corresponding if you picked them up and set them on top of each other. So corresponding angles would be angle one and angle five, angle two and angle six, angle four and angle eight, angle three and angle seven. We've got them on, we, uh, uh, sorry, we've gone over a lot of definitions. So let's see if we can name the types of angle relationship. If none exists, we write none. So if you look here, my transversal seven, this would be a hot dog. My hot dog bun, and then this would be inside the hot dog. No making fun of my pictures. All right. So angle one and angle eight, those are alternating exterior. They're on the outside. So alternating exterior. I am the only one allowed to abbreviate, not you. Angle two and angle three, those are consecutive interior. Consecutive interior, same side, inside. Five and seven are corresponding. If I picked them up and put them down, those would be corresponding. Two and seven. Um, angle two and angle seven, alternating interior. Angle one and angle three are corresponding. And angle five and eight are same side exterior or corresponding. Same side, conse I'm sorry, not consecutive. Consecutive and same side is fine. I like to use consecutive because it sounds more grown up. Consecutive exterior. All right, take a minute, and I want you to try example four. There's, there's different ones. You've got this. You've got a lot going on here. You can look at A as your transversal. You can look at B as your transversal. If you covered that up, C could be your transversal. And if you covered that piece up, D is your transversal. So you got a lot of angles going on here. So pay attention. So pause it and then come back and I'll tell you what it is. All right. Let's take a look. 5 and 13. 5 and 13 are corresponding. 7 and 14 are alternating interior. 3 and 6 are alternating exterior because they're on the outside. Um, 9 and 14, where's, there's 9, there's 14. Same side exterior or consecutive exterior. 4 and 7 are consecutive interior. 2 and 10 are corresponding. 8 and 14 are consecutive interior, consecutive interior. 6 and 11 are nothing. There's no transversal, so there's no relationship between 6 and 11. 4 and 13, there's no relationship. There's no transversal cutting through those angles. And 4 and 9 is going to be alternating the interior. That's interior. <laughs> and that's none. Okay? All right. So that's going to wrap up this long um, video, but totally worth it.